So some of you probably, well actually most of you probably don't know this because at the time I was doing the Arilla reviews I had like, I don't know, 20 subscribers? But one of the things that really got me doing video reviews at the time was a movie that I picked up from a friend down in Statesville called Near Death. It's hard to really quantify how important this movie was to me at the time. I'm not saying it was a good movie, not, not by any means, but if you think about it, had it not been for this thing, I never would have really wanted to do online video reviews. Which probably means I never would have done that much with online video in general, and in a roundabout kind of way might not have ever done Feeding the Trolls. So, you could call this movie the great, great, great ancestor of Feeding the Trolls. You know, in the same way that if Ugna hadn't decided that the ground sure did look like a nice place to explore, humans might never have evolved the way they did, and the whole of our society might be built on trees and running on a banana and nut-based economy. The movie itself is so laughably bad, I'm kind of surprised it's not more popular. I mean, just look at this shit! The movie starts off with a few shot of the beach in what I can only assume is some part of California. We also get to see this ghost dude do some kind of ghosty thing before we apparently travel back about 500 million years, judging on how close the moon is, where ancient aliens who look exactly like humans have built themselves a city that looks a lot like L.A. Club L. Yeah. Bet you don't know what the L stands for. Legos. Actually, I wonder if that couldn't be a viable business model for a bar. Beer and Legos. Or would you just end up with a bunch of drunk dudes choking their friends on Lego penises they made because they thought it'd be funny? What's it gonna be? You. Subtle. I mean, a slow, comfortable screw. So of course she does him, and he tells her that he knows a good place to fuck. This is kind of out of the way. Where are we? You're gonna love it, just trust me, huh? Suddenly, suddenly I don't. What? Why wouldn't you trust him? I mean, sure, he's a womanizing smelly jock itch who keeps calling you a whore and is now taking you to the part of the woods where people like him routinely dump bodies, but I'm sure he's basically a nice guy. Shut up, you whore. Now get over here. Hey, stop it. Good thing they added that sound effect or I would have just assumed that the car had turned slowly onto that dirt road. So they get to the director's, I mean the creepy, scary, haunted house, where we meet, well, these guys. Who, judging by their teeth, I would say really love chocolate Sarah. Like my knife? Yeah. Got it at a garage sale. My money. Hey! Boo! His name is Boo? Nah, see that guy strikes me more as a Jerry. Wait, did that skull just yawn? Shit, even the dead don't want to be in this thing. So we finally get to meet our main characters as they fight over who controls the power of the radio. Shit. Teddy, get off the radio. You're killing me right now. You, you get your way all the time. <laughs> oh my god, get off the radio! No, you get off the radio! But that's not the shit! Your shit! God, Billy, you are such a dick. I don't know what I ever see to you. Yeah, well you do in bed, don't you? Sorry, June. Okay, well that's one human down you have to personally apologize to. Only seven billion plus more to go! Blah blah blah, they're trying to find an old dilapidated house that used to belong to this old German film dude who supposedly murdered his housekeeper and now the place is all famous because it's cursed and... Uh, yeah, 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 you know, it's basically the plot of every haunted house story ever. He was no ordinary killer. Willy Von Braun was one of Hollywood's greatest directors in the 1940s. Oh, and this dude is trying to disprove the existence of ghosts and crap by... Ladies, I'm sorry to inform you, but it's all bullshit, and I'm gonna prove it with my computer program. You're gonna try and disprove the existence of ghosts via a computer program. And what exactly does this computer program do? Run a statistical analysis that goes through all the evidence and stuff and makes an approximate calculation of the probability of the existence of life after death? Nah, it just makes beep-boop noises over a motion graphic that has a skull on it. I don't get it. Why does it have a skull on it? And what is that exactly? Some kind of radar? Is it skull radar? But what do you expect a ghost-finding program to look like anyway? 
I mean, his laptop, his very clunky old laptop, isn't connected to anything, or it doesn't look like it is. Things so old, it probably doesn't even have Wi-Fi capability, so it's not like he's scanning it through that. All right, that's it. If there is any ectoplasmic bullshit in this place, it'll pop up right there on that screen. How? With what? And I'm assuming you mean the paranormal kind of ectoplasm, not the vodka ectoplasm. Anyway, so these guys, they get to the house, the prop guy covered in old leaves. I mean, the old spooky abandoned house. Wolfus, this is how you wake the dead. No, that's how to be an ass. Okay, so I gotta stop here for another little bright, but do you see all those cobwebs? They're all inside, but if you look outside, apart from the leaves, the windows and the door and everything look fine. They look clean. Now, I'm going to spoil a little bit of the plot here, but it's established later on in the movie that the guys who live in the house have been trapped there for decades, unable to even go three feet out the door. So why all the cobwebs? I mean, if they've been trapped inside, wouldn't it be reversed with the outside of the house looking all dilapidated and the inside being pristine? Why would these people, who we later on find out are mostly vain actors from the 40s, even allow themselves to live in this web-infested dump anyway? Shouldn't the inside of that house stink like rotten meat, too, if they're eating people? And what do they do with the bones? Chuck them out a window? It just seems like it would make for a much more interesting intro to this cursed house if they walked up to this dilapidated crap old building. But then when they got inside, it looked like the Hilton Ballroom. So they start trespassing and poking their noses all over the place when this guy shows up. I wasn't aware. My research mustn't be disturbed. Your research? That's what you're worried about, not the intruders. How about instead you say, Who the hell are you? Get out of my house! I'm Tammy Garrett. I sent word to you about our arrival. Oh uh, yeah. Let me tell you about her valiant efforts to try and get in contact with these people. Okay, so they have no phone and no email address, so she sends them a letter. And then they just show up. No, really. In fact, later on in the movie, we see the letter was never even open. So all Tammy really did was send the letter off and then go, Oh, yeah, it's totes cool if we just show up without warning on their doorstep. Come to think of it, look at that mailbox. Wouldn't the guy delivering the letter look at that and, I don't know, think the house was perhaps abandoned? Maybe it's just me, but if I were the mailman, I wouldn't see the box lying there and go, Yeah. Seems legit to shove the letter inside. For that matter, who pays the bills? I mean, there are obviously lights on in the house, so who pays the electric company? Or the tax on that very nice beachfront property? Does the IRS just show up and accept the gold coins from the scowling weirdos who live there? Why have you come? Nobody comes to this house. We're researching occult phenomena. My name is June Rivera. I'm an assistant professor of parapsychology at the Hollywood Hills State University. I'm writing a book on the spiritual realm, and these are my assistants, Tammy Garrett and Billy Strand. So for some insane reason, the undead cannibal people let the regular not-cannibal people stay in guest rooms. I don't want to fault the 2004 do-it-yourself special effects for being bad, but they look bad. Incredible. Already a cold spot. Speak to me, Lily Von Braun. I want to know the secrets of the other side. Well, what the fuck did you expect from him? Not five minutes ago, you just said he pulled the heart out of some chick. It would be like if I tried to talk to the ghost of Jack the Ripper and then got all weirded out because he started showing me a bunch of gory images. Like, what do you want? He's a fucking murderer. Oh, and the obviously gay guy and probably the best actress in this thing have sex. Stiff, uncomfortable, noisy, wet sex. So passionate are they that they don't even notice this dude almost walk into the room standing in full view just to their left. Um, I just wanted to see if you guys wanted any waffles. We're, we're making some waffles and, um, you know, I'm just gonna leave. So while those guys are having sex, the undead dudes figure out that they can start eating, and I know I harped on the special effects of this film, but whoever made that corpse, good job. But I'm still gonna point out that what they're eating is obviously jello. Ah. 
Ah, ah, anyway, they start eating, and the evil in the house, I guess, grows and starts to affect Blondie. Oh, shit! You goddamn bit me. No, oh, it wasn't that hard. But then Windows 98 starts to pick up something. Oh, something's registering. Wait a minute, a specter alert? So this guy, who I remind you doesn't believe in ghosts. Ghost no spirits? It's all bullshit. You're bullshit and a complete ass. It's not only created a computer program that can somehow detect them, but also programmed it to call them specters. I mean, okay, I guess out of some ironic compulsion, but why not anomalies or fluctuations? Wait a minute, that's a fucking PKE meter. It's hard to talk about how I feel about this guy other than it just seems wrong. I mean, it'd be like if Richard Dawkins spent billions of dollars trying to prove ghosts didn't exist by making an actual ghost trap and proton pack. I mean, how do you even test this stuff? And what was all this gonna be? A dry run? And this was supposed to prove there are no ghosts anywhere? What if ghosts are real, but this one particular place wasn't haunted? And what if it did work? This guy would have been heralded as the greatest scientist who ever lived, ushering in a new era of human development by proving life after death. This guy should have been like, holy crap, I did it, I'm fucking rich! Fuck you, bitches, I'm a goddamn billionaire now! Seriously, does he not know just by looking at this that he has just become the most famous person in the world, like, ever? Continued in part two.